Um, the, the way I look at it is that I think the rule of 80-20 applies to everything. So I think the more agents you have, you're going to have the top 20% do 80% of the business. And I just think that that's always going to be the case. And that seems to be the case now. It was the case when I had five, when I had five agents because guess who was the number one producer when I had five agents? It was me. I produced way more than, you know, the other, I, my production was higher than the other four agents on the team combined. Right. Um, so then, you know, so then going into last year when we had 20 agents, like we had, you know, four or five agents that were a majority of the business. And then, and then now we're kind of, you know, now we're kind of seeing this, um, that we're going to see the same thing this year, you know? All right. Welcome everybody to the Beyond the Sale podcast. I'm super excited today to have Stephen Myers with us. Stephen has a team out in Wichita, Kansas, and they're branded Urban Cool. I would love to talk more about that as well. Um, Stephen, I'm so excited to have you here. Really with the intention of the podcast always is to bring value to agents out there and business people alike. And so I'm um, very excited to have you and to share your story. Absolutely. Yeah. So Stephen, so yeah, glad to be here. Absolutely. Um, so, Stephen, if you could just let's just start off with um, talking about uh, before the call, we were talking about how many sides you you are looking to do this year um, in terms of homes sold. So, what did you? What was your production last year, and then your production this year? Yeah. So last year we were, you know, we we had high goals of doing five hundred last year, but we did about a little bit under four hundred. So. Uh, so, you know, it ended up being a really good year. I mean, we we're kind of weren't expecting the sales to kind of drop off the way they did towards the end of the year. So that kind of contributed to that. We were kind of thinking we were just going to ramp up the whole, whole year. Uh, but still obviously really successful year because the year before we sold, you know, just under 200. So, you know, basically doubled our production in a year. Um, you know, so that's why, you know, for this year, the goal is, is to, you know, shoot at 700. Um, I think that that's a realistic goal, you know, with the market and everything going on. So. Excellent, man. I love I love that we we're talking those numbers. It's like we we're like four two hundred, four hundred, seven hundred. Uh, and that's that's incredible. And and I, you know, yeah, we we've met. We were we were coaching with the same coach, and I think that's how we ultimately we initially met. And um, I was I was taken back by how fast you were able to grow. I think you got into the business what somewhere around like two thousand and eighteen. 17? Yeah, uh, 2017. Uh, yeah, 2018 was like my first full time year. So, yep. Okay. And then, and then from so, there, like, can you go through just the, your production levels from 2018 getting started to obviously we know where they were last year? Yeah. So, like, basically, you know, I, be, I started in, you know, full time in 2018, like I said. So, my, my first year, like, was like 30 homes, you know, like 29 or 30. It was not a lot, right? And it was definitely a struggle to even get to that 29 or 30 number. Uh, you know, so next year, like, I was like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really hit it hard, you know, learn a lot of things. And so the next year I did 40. So, you know, but, uh, you know, just bring it to a lot, you know, and just kind of, you know, hit a lot of ceilings at that point. Like I was just, you know, the amount of work I was doing, I, did, I was just by myself, you know, I didn't have any help. And so that was, that was a big struggle of mine. And so, you know, obviously so that was 2019. So then rolling in 2020, you know, I actually had a pretty good start to the year. And then all of a sudden March, you know, the world stopped. And so when the world stopped, like, I'm like, Hey, I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, I'm just going to keep working. Like what, what else am I going to do? Like, I don't want to sit, you know, we're in Kansas. Um, you know, March here isn't necessarily the best, you know, it's, it's starting and they can feel like spring, but you know, still a lot of cold, still a lot of, you know, rain, stuff like that. So not a lot of stuff to be doing outside. Obviously, no one's traveling anywhere. So, like, I'm just going to go to the office every day and just keep plugging in, right? Just make my dials, make my contacts. And so, like, I finally got to the point where I wasn't, like, going on appointments. So, I started calling all the people that I told, you know, that I told I was going to follow up with, you know, but I never ended up doing because I was, quote, unquote, too busy. I called them. They're like, hey, we bought a house, you know. Called them, call another person. Hey, we bought a house. So, you know, like, in, like, a week, I called, like, you know, 100 people that were on my follow-up list. And I would say over half of them bought a house and I'm like, man, I am just, I'm just miss missing out on this. Like, this is really frustrating, you know? And so, so that's when I started to, you know, you know, I started exploring like, okay, what can I do to really elevate myself? Right. So, 
and that's where we came across our, our, you know, our, you know, my first coach and the coach that you were using at that time, um, Jason Samard and hold on a second. And, um, so that's when, you know, I started really, you know, fully understanding kind of the, the team concept and kind of like creating, um, you know, jobs for different people instead of me having all the jobs, you know? So that's, that's where I really was as I was, you know, I was the one doing the marketing. I was the one doing the, the phone calls. I was the one doing the paperwork. And then I'd say I was the one showing the homes and, and, you know, and putting the stuff into the MLS and, you know, just doing all that stuff. So, um, you know, so obviously I, once I found how well leverage worked, you know, I could really figure out how to explode my business. So, and then that's been the focus, focus since then. Yeah. And so, so I, I had that same thought process too right now. I think we probably came into it around the same time as well. However, your, your growth is, is exponentially more than mine. Um, and, and, and I think that's, I, I mean, I think it's in, I want to talk to you about like, so some of those ceilings, those mental hurdles that you went through maybe, um, also, um, so what do you, I guess, what do you think your superpower is or the reason why you were able to hit, go from, I think we did 150 transactions last year, but so, so for you to go from 40 transactions, yeah, which is, which is, which is great, but go from yeah. 40 transactions totally. to 200 transactions to 400 transactions. What, why, how? Well, I mean, so I, my biggest superpower is, which I'm very fortunate about is, you know, my background before getting real estate was, you know, I was a aerospace engineer. So, um, so being an aerospace engineer, having that engineering background, you know, I actually, you know, climbed the corporate ladder really quickly. Um, and I just really have a good understanding of like creating system, system and processes to, to build things so that I was working in project management slash program management in the aerospace world. And, you know, I would have 200, $400 million projects that I was managing. So, you know, having to put those together and then, you know, I just took those same skills and just took them over to like how to build a team essentially, you know? So, uh, and, you know, and we're very much, uh, you know, a systems based team. So, it, you know, and it was kind of like when I first got in real estate, I fought against it because I hated it so much, you know, like I hated coming from that world where, everything was built that way. And then once I just embraced it and can kind of put my own spin on it, then that really allowed me to really, you know, create that growth trajectory that I needed. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. And then, and then, so, so creating systems, creating leverage in the business was, is definitely the, the, the reason why you were able to do that. Uh, that's clear. And then how do you see, so from like, if you zoom from 10,000 foot, like a 10,000 foot view, and we look at the business and, um, the process, how do, how do you look at your business? I know for me, for us, it's like, we're, we're thinking it as like lead generation or attraction, conversion, delivery. I guess like, that's how I kind of see my, my business and like the systems and processes around that. Um, right. So I, I guess what, what does your business look like with regards to like lead generation, conversion, delivery? Yeah. So, I mean, the biggest, you know, we're really big on automation um, but, uh, so for, you know, lead, you know, lead generation, you know, we're really big on pay-per-click. We're really big on social media and we use real, you know, we use realtor and Zillow leads as well, but you know, our, our focus is really building up our own lead source and not, and not relying on Zillow and realtor.com just because like, obviously our lead flow from those lead sources has been down or, you know, year over year, but, you know, focusing on, you know, pay-per-click and, social media and then you know we're really getting into seo as well now we know we're seeing those you know grow and you know much more affordable rate and much more predictable rate as well so all of our leads then go to a go to our isa department so um our isa department you know we now we just actually hired um number four number five last week um just because we're really that was always really a big thing for me is just having people fully focused on lead conversion and you know as you kind of like that was always one of the things that i kind of kept running into when i kept hiring agents to my team is that agents you know to train an agent to convert leads is that's all that's a that's a job in itself um so as opposed and obviously there's all those other things they have to learn as well so 
but kind of bringing in people that specialize just in lead conversion and I can focus my training with them and obviously just focus on, you know, developing their skills over the time, you know, then that has helped. So, you know, I think in 20, you know, 2021, we had like one to two, you know, one, I would say one and a half ISAs, you know, 2022, we had three ISAs. And then, so the goal this year is five ISAs. So, uh, you know, just to kind of keep that scale scaling up. And I, I don't think we're going to, you know, ever grow beyond five. I think five is kind of our max, uh, just because I think we'll, we'll start to really see, like start putting together systems to kind of make sure that, you know, we can, we can maximize our lead conversion with the five line saves. So, okay. That's awesome. That's awesome. And then, so you, that, thanks for sharing that. So the, so there's five ISAs on the team. The leads come into the ISA. It's kind of similar to what our team looks like as well. And then it goes out to agents. And how many agents do you have right now on the team? And so, uh, so we just hit 35 this month. Wow. Wow. And you, you know, it, it, in the past, people were always talking about, um, you know, agent production levels and how it's so important to have you get your agents productions level up. And I think that it's true. But now you start yep. to hear these conversations about agent heads, like how many agents on your team, like the more you just, the more agents on your team is equals more production levels. How do you, how are you thinking about that now? Are you, are, are you still recruiting more agents to the team or is 35 enough? Well, I mean, you know, it's, it's crazy to think about like, you know, like back in even 2021, I thought, you know, I think September of 2021, I had five agents, you know, and I was like, okay, well this, this is a five agents is a lot, but and then, and then last year we grew to 20 and then this year it's just been, you know, a crazy amount of people kind of coming in with the market and obviously seeing what we're doing in the marketplace. Um, so they they want to be a part of that. So, uh, the, the way I look at it is that I think the rule of 80, 20 applies to everything. So I think the more agents you have, you're going to have the top 20% do 80% of the business. And I just think that that's always going to be the case. And that seems to be the case now. It was the case when I had five when I had five agents because guess who was the number one producer when I had five agents? It was me. I produced way more than you know the other. I my production was higher than the other four agents on the team combined, right? Um, so then you know, so then going into last year when we had twenty agents, like we had you know four or five agents that were a majority of the business, and then and then now we're kind of you know now we're kind of seeing this um that we're going to see the same thing this year you know so um and and i think it's important to keep keep recruiting because you know we've had people that i thought were going you know they were on a really good growth trajectory but then they've had some things in life that made them how to take a step back and so if i was planning on that person you know doubling or even equally in their production from last year and i'm setting my whole business based upon that philosophy and then something does have to make them pull back whether it's health or family or, or whatever related, um, then that, and then I'm, and I'm just gambling my business based upon that, you know? So, um, and you know, like last year, our top five agents were not any of the agents that we had in 2021. So, you know, um, if I would have just not recruited and just stuck with my five, then what would my numbers look like, you know? And, and going into this year, like, I don't think, I think some of the top five agents, last year aren't going to be the top five this year. So again, it's just like some of them, some of them have scaled back, but then there's also agents that we have recruited that have just like, you know, came in, came in crushing it. So uh, why would I not want more people crushing it on my bit in my business? So I think it's, you know, it's hard, you know, like it's a hard line on like what's enough and, and that, but as now we've kind of grown and we have a, you know, really good onboarding system that's that's obviously continually getting better it's easy to bring agents on and you know like a lot of the training and is really scalable because you know like i just did a training with my agents all on, on you know and we had 20 agents there right so it's like how what's the difference between having two agents and 20 agents it's really not much of a difference the training still is the same so you know it, it just it just the scalability really adds into place and obviously in a time when it's harder to get leads. It's harder to get deals under contract. Um, there's a lot of attraction going to a team right now that that's doing the marketing for you. That's that's helping with the transaction side of the business for you, um, so that you can focus on what you know their superpower should be, which is you know getting in front of clients and getting them under contract. 
Awesome. Yeah. So, so now that you're, you guys are at the production you're at, you have the different departments that you're doing. Um, your role has shifted from 2018 to now probably immensely. It looks completely different. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. um, so like, so as you're, you're probably not in production anymore. I think the last time we spoke, you weren't in production anymore. But now that you're you're not in production anymore, what is your general focus? I know a lot of team leaders were focusing on recruiting. A lot of them might have been focusing on marketing. But what is how are you seeing that um, right now? And what do you what do you, what does your day look like? Uh, so my day works uh, looks like usually like eight thirty in the morning. We do a role play. I do a role play with the agents. So we usually get that going just to kind of get you know get any questions, any objections thrown, you know, out there, just kind of work through those with the agents. Then, uh, then at that point, I usually will switch over. I have a mortgage company, so I'll usually kind of go over there, just get kind of the rundown on what's, what's going on for, for the uh, day there, make sure there's nothing that I need to jump on in front of that. Um, then usually I'm bouncing back to the urban cool side, the, the real estate side and, and getting into like either you know, would do a meeting with the ISAs or do a meeting with the operations department, um, kind of just do my different meetings with them. Uh, then usually we throw, you know, three days a week, I throw in a training session and we have a sales meeting once a week. So, you know, preparing for that. And then, you know, then usually I try to spend, you know, three or four hours a week recruiting. And I, I usually, you know, spend a few hours each week on, you know, building automations, you know, creating better processes. Uh, we're really focused, like we're obsessed with the client client experience right now. So we're, we're really digging deep into that. So, you know, just kind of like we have these projects that we're kind of wanting to push the needle forward for our company and just, you know, focusing, focusing on, on putting the effort into that. And then, you know, usually like there's probably about two or three hours during the day where I'm getting questions or, or, you know, working on coaching up the agents on, on specific deals. So. So still, still really heavy, heavy on that. Um, you know, my goal was to, you know, next year or two to have that off my plate, but for now that's still on my plate. And then, um, just continually like our growth in terms of our, you know, we, we just brought on, you know, starting an insurance company, you know, we're looking at maybe, you know, starting a title company. So just as we kind of keep scaling up our business, just like, how can we add more, more money to the bottom line to just, you know, continue our growth and just maximize our, our, our profitability. So that's awesome. Um, you know, I'll just shift gears a little bit because, you know, when I first saw your brand urban cool, you mentioned it, it, it was, it was, I thought it was awesome and it was completely refreshing and different than what, um, you see out there. Um, no, the normal yeah. team. Yep. And so I guess in, when you first came up with that brand, and what was the objective of coming up with Urban Cool as the brand, also the colors? And then I guess, has there been any, um, has there been any obstacles that you've been dealing with after creating that brand that you think maybe you would have done it differently starting over? No, I mean, it's really been kind of crazy. So I, you know, the reason I came up with Urban Cool, because I, I kind of like, I knew that I wanted the team to be. I wanted to have a team, right? And I wanted my team to be just beyond who I was because at some point, like I, you know, I, I don't know like where exactly I want to go with it. So obviously, you know, I wanted something that was more like independent of, of my name, you know? So, so, um, and I know like I got like some feedback from a few different coaches and other agents that basically told them that I was going to be building a buyer business, you know, because people, people want to know who they're listing. And, and really like I, I can still, I definitely understand where they're coming from. Uh, but like at that point I was like, well, I don't care if I'm buying it or I'm building a buyer's, you know, business because like, that's what my lead gen is focused on. Like, I don't have, I'm new to the business. I don't have a ton of listing opportunities. So, um, so yeah, let me get in front of buyers and then I'll figure out the listings later. So, so that was the one feedback I got from a few different, um, you know, team leaders, coaches, you know, stuff like that in the industry, people I really respect. And I, and I did take their feedback into account, you know? So, but like, really like our brand has, you know, we, the reason we went with like the, the logo and the bright pink, um, was because it was catchy and we were, you know, my first real big, um, lead gen was social media. And so social media is all about being catchy on social media. Like, 
what makes you want to stop scrolling, you know? So, you know, cut, you know, pink colors, you know, bright colors. Um, you know, we do a lot of, you know, crazy fonts, fonts and stuff like that on our stuff. We do a lot of, you know, interesting little, um, cuts on our videos, you know, stuff like that to just, it's not the same, like traditional real estate, not the traditional kind of, you know, boring marketing. And I, and I just like for myself, I always wanted to be different. Like I never wanted to be the listing agent that wore a suit to the appointment. I never wanted to be, uh, the, you know, I always wanted to be the guy with like, you know, a band tee and t-shirt, you know, jeans, um, you know, and, 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 and vans, you know, just going to the appointments. I didn't want to, I, that's who I am. That's what I wanted to be. You know, I got the long hair, obviously, um, you know, so just, that's just who I was. And I wanted something that was kind of more representative of who I was and what, what I wanted to be. So, but now like, man, like it has become its own thing. Like, you know, our agents like love wearing the, we're wearing the, the stuff they love being associated with the brand. Like it's almost funny because I feel like the agents that I recruited and that have grown with the team, they, they have more like identify the, with the identity with the brand that I do, you know, they're, they're more passionate about it, which is like, it's really awesome to see just something that, you know, you just like create to like, you know, to kind of separate yourself from the other real estate agents in your market to your competition. And then like, it just becomes its own thing. And, and, you know, people, we have really big, bright pink signs and, and people will message me all the time. Like, Hey, I saw your sign in this neighborhood. It looks, looks awesome. You know? And it's like, I mean, how, like, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, they they don't see my face on the sign, but they know who the signs is and they know, you know, they know to message me or send me a message on Facebook or Instagram or, or whatever it is. And, and they, they, they definitely notice it, you know? That's awesome. And I love that again, because you're, you're building, it was always bigger than yourself and you wanted to make it take yourself out of it. And you always want to build it something bigger. So it, that makes a lot of sense for why you would want to do that. The, the thing is, Yep. So you mentioned like, and I hear this too, because I come from like a really heavy listing, like skills based, take your listings, prospecting uh, business. And he, you know, working with Jason Samard, like he comes from, and we, we both work with him, he comes from the buyer side of the business. And that's really why I like sought out his side of the business. Cause I wanted to understand more and that now I, I think I'm curious what you think about this, but I believe that one side might be more leverageable. Um, when getting started. Um, and then I, and I'm assuming that's probably why you're focusing really heavy on client care at the moment, because pr probably through client care, that's kind of where a lot of the listings will start to come from down the road. But I'm just, I want to understand, or I guess get your perspective on that. Like, is, do you think one side's more leverageable than others? Can you get more leverage on the listing side or? I mean, uh, so here's the thing, like, this is what I, I find really interesting. So Obviously, like I 100% agree that listings create more opportunities, you know, like I, I, it, 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 it always will stand the test of time. But what I will say is that listings does not create co-marketing for you, right? So you're talking like, at least in Kansas, right? Like the buyers pick the title company, not the sellers. The buyers pick, obviously pick the lender, not the sellers, right? So like a home warranty company is same thing, right? So you know, when you get started and you're able to get a little bit of money from a, a, a mortgage professional and you're able to get a little money from a title company and you're able to get a little money from an insurance for co-market, you know, for all, for MSAs, like that allows you to kind of leverage more. Right. And then obviously like, you know, you know, most people know is that listing marketing is way more expensive than buyer marketing, right? Most people are attracted to looking at homes. They're attracted to the ideal of their next move more than what their home is worth or whatever. Um, so, and people definitely are interested in that, but you're going to pay more for the opportunity because not as many people are interested. in that. So, so now what we have had success with is now we have these, this great big database, you know, we have almost 50,000 people in our database and now we're just retargeting them with seller marketing all the time, you know, and we are creating a ton between the ISAs or client care department. And between our, you know, our, our retargeting Facebook ads with our uh, mailing or emails, you know, checking home values, uh, cash offers, all that kind of stuff, you know, going out, then it's really starting to create a lot, a lot of listing opportunities from that database. You know? So, so that's that's really where we've had a lot of success. And then obviously focusing on the client experience, you know, the goal is that creates people that comes in your funnel. They have a really good experience and they're going to tell their family and friends about it. so 
Awesome. Awesome. So in, moving on to the, we, you know, opening up the mortgage business, opening up ancillary services title, you kind of spoke about that too and why that's important a little bit. Um, but what made you want to open up? I mean, it just seems like, you know, it could be seen like more work. Um, and like, why, why, why do that? Obviously you could focus more on your, your real estate business. Why open ancillary services? I mean, it's a really good question, you know, and I think it's a lot that people kind of debate on. And, and really for me is like, I know where I want to go, right? Like I know kind of where I see myself going. And when, you know, we were doing like, you know, we had a preferred lender. The problem of it is, is like preferred, a lot of the lenders are not necessarily the best systems people. They're not necessarily the best, um, you know, the best that retain, you know, like having a database and having automation and all that. So, you know, when you have a system like that, like me, and you're getting like, let's just say last year with the three ISAs, I mean, some days we're sending five to 10 people to get pre-qualified with a lender. So that's a lot for a lender to handle and not really want to build a business off them. So, and then obviously for me on the real estate side, that's a lot of business I'm sending to the lender to put it in their lap and just, I mean, just hope that they do the best job to convert those opportunities over. So for me, it just be, was really like, it, yeah, there's definitely money in it. And the money, you know, is, I would say is definitely like more lucrative than I would, than real estate is. But, um, but also it's the, the fact that I can then control my conversion on the real estate side. And, and that just allows me to, you know, pump more money in marketing, trust my marketing, trust the fact that I had the ISAs, you know, just, it builds, it builds a lot more um, you know, a, a lot more, um, ability to control the client experience and control the conversion rate from the beginning to the end. So, so that was really big for me, um, just building that out because I mean, when you start really, you know, and then maybe some people haven't figured out, or maybe some people have a really good lender partner that has that, has that complete, like, I'm going to build this, you know, because, you know, when you're doing you know, two to 300 loans uh, a year, that usually you have to have a team of people doing that. It's not just one person. So that you had to find that person that wants to grow a business just like you do, um, that will scale up with you. And then also like, you know, are they going to be fully dependent upon you? Um, or, you know, what's, what's going to happen to their like long-term, you know, trajectory. So you don't want to like necessarily build a relationship with someone that and we've had this happen and then all of a sudden they they get to a situation where like they have a health issue or something or they want to go on vacation for a month which is perfectly fine but then it's like okay what do you do you tell them like i can't just stop like they have a bunch of people that are in their pipeline pre-approved like i can't just stop business um you know my buy side my buyer side business because my lender now is on vacation so just just again just having that control and that's really big for me is just the control of it and just understanding like, Hey, where, where can we get better at on the lending side? So, um, that to me is like been really big and, and, and it's also been nice because, you know, we do get people pre-approved and they, you know, let our agents know like, Hey, actually my sister's a realtor. I'm going to use her. Well, guess what? They're still using our lending company. So that marketing still went somewhere to generate some revenue. Um, so, you know, and again, like the insurance becomes a big piece because, you know, insurance is not necessarily, you don't make a lot of money, um, on insurance, but it's the fact that you are going to constantly be getting those renewals time after time as opposed, you know, so then you'll just keep getting those checks. And then obviously your insurance company that you own is going to have a relationship with that client. So they were like, Hey, I want to sell a house uh, or, Hey, I want to refinance. And they know exactly where to send those people to, to make sure that that business stays in the house. That's awesome. So, yeah. Yeah, that's that's super cool. So when when we're you're building this and um, you're thinking you're opening up your mortgage company, opening up a title company, opening up an insurance company, are you thinking of strategic partners, JVing with people on this sort of thing? How are you th like? Because obviously your you your time is probably super valuable. Like, how are you going about thinking about making those moves? Yeah, I mean, so we definitely do have partners, you know. That's the beautiful thing about EXP, you know, is like I have a downline in my market. I have a downline in my state. And so like a lot of those people are happy to use my mortgage company. You know, a lot of those people are happy to use our ancillary services uh, because, you know, it's kind of like they, they feel like it contributes back to kind of what we're building here. 
obviously we're going to contribute back to them and making sure that they get taken care of. Uh, but we've also expanded outside of just our EXP network. But, you know, we have other agents, you know, like I've, I've brought on other lenders that don't, that have their own relationship. You know, we're up to four LOs now. Um, so they're, they're out there, you know, building up their own pipelines with agents that are, you know, like Keller Williams or at, uh, uh, Berkshire Hathaway, you know, like all these different brokerages. So, so that's been a really powerful thing to just kind of be able to collect revenue off of that. Um, it just really starts to, you know, create this snowball effect of just kind of, you know, quote unquote market domination, you know, and just in terms of everything and, and has worked out really well. Like, so like for the mortgage company, I'm not the face of it. I don't want to be the face of it because I want other agents to be okay with, with using it. You know, we haven't had any issue with agents sending us business. Obviously we keep them as two separate entities. So we don't share a CRM. We don't share contact information that, you know, there's, there's a fee, a fee, uh, a loop that feeds in from the urban cool side to the mortgage side, but there's not a feed a feedback loop from the mortgage side to the urban cool side. So, uh, you know, we, we did that on purpose because we don't, we, I don't want there ever to be any kind of discrepancy on where leads come from and, and what they do, you know? So, uh, because we, we promised the, any of the clients, you know, any agents that set up as business that those are going to be their, their clients for life, as long as they stay in the business, you know, obviously if they don't stay in the business, then we'll have to figure out something else, but you know, like it's at some point they're like, Hey, we're going to put it on pause. Like, I know I have a whole, I have a bunch of mortgage automation built in, um, that we're going to, you know, keep following up, keep sending them texts, keep sending them emails, keep sending them value. And then hopefully at some point we can convert them back into an opportunity and send them back to that agent, you know? So, so, you know, what's, that's kind of our, our goal to our clients on, on the mortgage side and, and. You know, it's night. I mean, it was it was definitely a lot of time. I spent probably over half my time last year on it, but this year I'm down to like 25. percent You know, so and I, I think probably once we get a little bit more built out this year, it'd probably be, you know, down to 10 percent next year. So and it's just going to be a nice little profit center that that kind of has its own little thing going. So awesome. You know, you you were mentioning like you know you know what you said. I know what I wanted to build. Like you were clear on that. Like. So, like, what are you trying to build? Like, and then, and then, like, from this, has that changed over time? Is it is it different now? But ultimately, I mean, what are you? What are you building here? Like, when is it? Like, hey, like, this is this is it. I got it. I mean, I don't, I don't. I, I, <laughs> That's yeah, a hard question. Right? Yeah, I mean, so like, it's cr- <laughs> Never. yeah, it's exactly yeah. So <laughs> it's crazy because like when I originally started coaching, and I would think to myself like, what does my future look like? you know, in real estate. And I was like, well, I want to be the number one team in my market. Like that seems like so crazy, like such a stretch of a goal. And like here we're now three years later, that's, that's who we are. You know, we're the number one team in the market. So, um, congrats. Yeah. So then, uh, you know, and I was like, I would never have 35 agents. That seems so crazy. Like when you have like one agent and then I'm in like 35 agents, seems, seems insane. Like it really does. It's still to this day. Like, you know, like we have, we use Slack for all our office communication. Like we have over 50 people in our Slack channel. Like that's, insanity to me you know like how how like just going from one person to 50 people um in a matter of three less than three years like that's 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 it's 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 very humbling you know because it's like i i put a lot of you know like i take it you know i take it very uh seriously because i feel like i am guiding these people in their in their life you know and their their business and their success so like i want them all to be successful and i want to make sure that i am constantly contributing to them to make sure that that's what's happening for them. So, but, but yeah, I mean, so for me, like I, you know, we actually changed our name. We originally were like urban cool ICT. So ICT stands for, uh, that's like the, uh, short for Wichita. That's like our, the airport call sign here is ICT. Um, so everyone's kind of uses that here in their marketing to kind of, you know, not say Wichita. Uh, but we actually changed it last year to say urban cool homes because, now we're starting to expand, you know, we're starting to expand kind of in some of the areas around, um, you know, within an hour or so away that are that the ICT would be a turnoff because it's, we're like, well, we're not Wichita, we're, we're this town, right? So, so we've changed our name to, to be associated with that. So now we're just urban cool homes. And it's really funny, like, as I'll get people ask me because we'll go to these small towns, you know, like obviously it's Kansas. We have farm towns here. They, they do exist. Um, and people are like, well, is the urban cool, like going to be a turnoff for those people? And I'm like, you know, it could, it could really well be like, I think, you know, sometimes I've had a couple of like farmers not list with me because of it, but, 
but that's fine. Like I'm okay with that because there's a lot of people that, you know, like urban outfitters is a thing. There's a lot of stores with that urban that have a national presence. So urban is something that, you know, that some people associate with as, as fun. And that's what we really try to do is like, be like fun and we're different, you know? Uh, but you know, it maybe has cost us a few opportunities in the past, but yeah, but we're just looking for the homes and just kind of, you know, I would say just like kind of grow your regionally, you know, because like with the mortgage company, we're, we're licensed to do business throughout the whole state. So like, why not, why not leverage agents? Why not help recruit people to EXP, you know, like why not, you know, why not keep kind of building a, a funnel of contribution, like to these people, you know, like, Hey, this is how you do, this is how real estate should be done. This is the new world of real estate, you know, it's in, in, and, and it's like constantly getting all the time feedback, like, Hey, that's there are a lot of agents over here suck. They're really old school. They don't, they don't believe in websites. They don't believe in, in automation. They don't believe in like client experience. You know, they just, they just like, well, let's good old boys. Like I'm going to go, you know, put the, uh, put the sign of the yard, put the MLS and we're going to call that good. You know, we're going to, I'm going to take pictures with my cell phone and, and you know, it's like, we're talking about $800,000 listings that are being listed in that way. And it's, it's crazy that that's the experience that some of these people have. You know, that's, you know, what's really cool for me, Steven, is that you're like, I hear like people talk about building teams to optimize for time, not for money. Right. And, and what's really neat is what you're, I'm hearing you say is like, okay, look, I'm not interested in optimizing necessary for time. I just want to, I want to build this thing. I want to contribute to people's lives. I'm looking, I think it very humbly. I, I want to contribute. I want to, you know, have that culture and I'm looking just to build this like what's what's possible let's just yeah. build this thing and let's see what's what happens so that's awesome because it kind of gives you gives some more um priority and some more perspective um for me at least and that, that's that's super helpful what do you think is what like maybe the biggest challenge that you you have right now also uh, with another question that i want to bring to that is like what is like what's the best piece of advice that you have received that you think it's been the most helpful with growing the team yeah, I mean, so, I mean, one of the biggest struggles, and I think it's just always a struggle, no matter what team I talk to, is is really just agent accountability. That's always going to be the biggest struggle. Um, it's really just kind of positioning how best to to work in that. So, you know, I try to work from a perspective of, you know, there's a lot of teams that make, you know, like, you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do all. You know, I tried that, it didn't work. So now we do everything that's like more volunteer based, you know, but obviously like there's rewards for volunteering to do things, you know, showing up to the training, showing up to the role plays, um, showing up to the team meetings, stuff like that. I mean, we, we have some things that are mandatory, but we have the amount of things that we have mandatory now is a lot less than it used to be. And that is just because like, I'm, I'm starting to, you know, realize, you know, with people's lives and, and stuff like, you know, there's people that have to drop their kids off in the morning to go to school. And like, so then those people can't jump on the role play. So should I be penalizing those people because they want to drop their kids off to school? Um, you know, but they're great agents, like they're crushing it as agents. So why, why should I penalize them for, for prioritizing that in the morning, but then they work their evenings, you know? So it's just really kind of just creating this system that kind of allows agents to kind of be successful. And by the same point, like we kind of have that accountability piece in there because we are investing in them and you know, with leads and systems and, and all that. So, so that's, that's the biggest struggle I think that we constantly kind of like try to figure out. And, and obviously like it's, it's a very market, it, it, it varies on the market to or the time of the market too. you know, like winter holidays, you know, people get distracted. Um, and then you always say you get the summer, you know, you get vacation and stuff happening. So, the nice thing is that usually all the agents are pretty dialed in when it really matters, uh, but the top producing agents are dialed in all year long. So, so really it's just, you know, again, kind of getting that 80, 20 and just understanding that's the way it is and not getting too frustrated with that. But it can't be, it can't be something that you do get frustrated on over time. Um, and the next, what was the second part of the question? The, the the best advice that was or the most impactful advice that was that helped with collaboration or help with the team growth or you know is uh kfr right i mean that's that has been something that i really you know was just keep effing recruiting um you know that has been something that has you know when i first heard it i thought it was the craziest thing i ever heard i'm like what that makes no sense but 
as we kind of as I look back over the over the years, like I see why it's important because you know, like we talked about earlier, was you know your my top my top producing agents in 2021 are not my top producers. They're still not my top producing agents now. Or you know, my top producing page agents in 2022. Some of them will be top producing agents in 2023, but some will not. Um, so it's just important to kind of keep keep doing that, you know, and I, I've seen people do like the Navy SEAL teams, which is, you know, where you have like four or five agents that are just crushing it. But, you know, like this year or in the past year, I've seen a lot of them fall apart, you know, because they just because of the, the market. So, um, and then why would you want to build your business on something that can fall apart? Like, you know, we have a really good culture. We, we stay, we stay, you know, obsessed on really making sure our culture stays the same. We're very, we're a very diverse team. We have a lot of different backgrounds, um, a lot of different, you know, um, we have, you know, I think we have like, but you know, you know, in some markets it's more, uh, you know, it's more common, but we have like seven bilingual agents on our team, which is not very common for our market. Um, so we, we, we attract a lot of very, uh, more diverse people because of our branding. And, and I think it works out really well for us. And, and our culture is, is is based upon that. We're not like the traditional, like super conservative, you know, Midwest team. We're the fun and diverse Midwest team. So, uh, which is which is definitely different. So again, like that's going to turn off some people to our brand, but that's perfectly fine um, because we 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 attract a lot of people that want to want to be associated with us, and that's really what that's really what's important. Uh, so yeah, so I mean that that really has come into to just be something like when I first heard it, like it seemed very, it seemed really crazy. Like it, it really did because I'm like, why, why would I focus on that? You know, but then it just has done nothing, but has proven that it's, it's very important to do. Um, and then I've actually, you know, I've, I've absorbed one team. Uh, we, I would, you know, not really absorb, I would say the word is, but I, you know, we, we kind of partnered with, with one team and there's a couple other teams in our market that want to partner with us because they've lost a lot of key agents and they like, they just don't have the ability to, to really, uh, you know, to like keep their, keep going at that same rate, you know, they have to start over on their, on their team building because, you know, they lost a couple, they lost half their agents and that's, that's hard to like totally reset, which is like, if I lose three agents, like I, I don't want to lose three agents, but then I'm down to 32 agents and I still have enough people to, to run leads. And I'm, I'm not worried about my marketing spin at that point. You know, like I, I, I still feel like there's a lot to, to build off of. So, um, so I just think it's really, it's really important because, you know, I have seen, I'm sure like everyone else has right now in their market, they've seen teams, um, you know, shut down or collapse or, or whatever, just because they were, you know, there's a couple of teams in our market that were like super heavy, just purely Zillow teams, right? Like they were just, they were doing the Zillow spin, paying a lot of money. And then, well, Zillow leads are a quarter and that's their, their 25% of what they were. Um, back in 2021 so now their business is like they don't they don't have any other methods to create business they didn't create pay-per-click or websites or social media presence they were just relying purely on, on zillow so um you know so we're we're recruiting people from those teams um we like i said we partnered with one one of those teams and and i think by the, in the next few months we'll probably have a couple more partners teams that we partner with that then are going to come over because they just they're they're just done trying to build that you know that's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. And I, I know I was talking with Jason about that. He was recently absorbing some teams. I'm not sure if you talked with him for a yep. little while, but but they're they're going in, in that regard too. So that's that's an and and it's a strategy he was talking about. Hey, look for some of those teams that's happening right now. Also, a lot of a lot of people get out of the business yep. now that they're team leaders. They don't want to, you know, they're they're aging out of the business. Yep. So cool. Well, Stephen, I, I I really really appreciate it, man. I, I, we need to connect more. I mean, there's so much value that you have. I appreciate you coming on yeah. the podcast and giving value to our community. It's it's uh, where can people? Um, I I know you're a busy guy, but if you know, how how do you connect? Is it, is it social media? If someone wants to connect yeah. with you, or if they want to send you a referral, or or any of that sort of absolutely, thing? yeah, yeah. Connect yep. with me on social media. Uh, you know, Facebook's usually the best. So I'm, you know, Steve Myers, Stephen Myers, uh, Wichita area on Facebook. Uh, my Instagram is Stephen Myers EXP. Um, so yeah, so feel free to reach out there. I mean, I'm usually really responsive. Uh, try to be at least sometimes, uh, but notifications get buried and then you, you realize after the fact that they do. So, 
but yeah, I mean, usually like I'll, I'll, I try to make a, a goal to get back up. If you ever want to call me, like calling is probably the best. I usually always answer my phone. So it's, uh, my number is 316-680-1554. Um, so ha- always happy to, to get a call or a text. Awesome. Hey, thanks yep. again so much. And, uh, thanks for joining us and, uh, we'll speak with you soon. Yeah. Appreciate it, man.